Kevin Garnett will not not be on the list. Will not get a Christmas gift from me no. at all. We didn't give a fuck about LeBron. We didn't fear LeBron, and we didn't think that he can beat all five of us. Here's fifth. What did he say to you when he was running up the court getting torn out? I don't understand Italian. I don't. I don't like him. Yeah. We're not there trying to be friendly. When I play, when I competed friendly, I wasn't. I wasn't no good at. I didn't play to make any friends. I wasn't playing to uh, be liked or anything, man. I played with a tenaciousness of uh, understanding that I'm about to be stepped on versus let me step, you know. Yeah. And that's how I played, man. I played with no apologies. If you didn't like what I was doing, or if you didn't like how I played, you either met the level yeah. or you quit. Kevin Garnett is one of the greatest NBA players of all time an NBA champion, an MVP, a 15-time All-Star, an NBA Defensive Player of the Year. He is one of the most ruthless, savage, cutthroat killers of all time. He's mostly known for his determination and crazy antics. He was a trash talker, and that's exactly what this video is about. In this video, we look at six trash talking moments by Kevin Garnett. All these stories are pieced in together. We have players telling the story as they recall it, with interviews and actual game footage over the top. These videos take a long time to make, so I'd greatly appreciate if you guys could leave a like to show your support. If you're new around here and you enjoy NBA content every single week, why not hit that subscribe button? And without further ado, let's get into the video. The first story starts off with a young Austin Rivers. Austin Rivers was obviously a high school kid by this stage and was Doc Rivers' son, so he was around the Boston Celtics practice facility all the time. On this particular day, he was facing off one-on-one -on -one against Paul Pierce, then Big Baby, then Kendrick Perkins. But then, he faced off against Kevin Garnett. And this is the story of what happened next. I saw him play Austin Rivers when he was like a junior in high school. Right. He got like a bucket on ticket. No, no, no. Let me tell the story. Go ahead, go ahead. Yo, so crazy we come story. in the so we come in, so we come in the practice by two hours early. Everybody's in there. So we got practice, I'm saying 10. Everybody's <laughs> in there about 8:30. So in there, Austin Rivers is seeing his father. You know, they used to come up and visit his dad because his dad, they were still living in Florida. Imagine he juiced up too. Man, he juiced up. <laughs> this man. kid Every is guy's juiced up. coming here. He's <laughs> feeling himself. He had the little joint. So he playing one-on-one -on -one with with Paul. So then, you know, I see him and Paul, because Paul play ones in the morning just to get himself going before practice. So he's, you know, playing ones, and he's giving Paul some good work, you know? Then Perk, like, hold on, let me get some of this. I got to get some of this, because he's the stopper. Everybody, if you want to see where your game is, you play Perk one-on-one, -on -one, right? Up. Perk ain't going for no pump fakes. He's just real sound. Man, he giving Perk the business. <laughs> Austin <laughs> Rivers. Yeah, got I come him. in here, so I'm like, I came in here, and, um, you know, he's playing guys to five. He's, I think he mops. I think he. Uh, uh, I think he beat play, and then he mop uh, perk five zero, and you know. Can't, yeah, can't go to court. Like, wow. so he came in here. I had my <laughs> shoelaces unlined, and I came in from the weight room, and he rolled the ball, and I said, "What?" And I looked at it, hit my toes. I said, "What?" I said, "Check." <laughs> I oh. said, "Check." Yeah, Dad. Everybody like. Ooh. And, and then they, you know, I'm a dragon, bro. I'm a dragon, and I know this is. I know your dad, the coach, so I got to be real careful on how I let this dragon out. <laughs> this is a kid. This is a high school kid. Got a lot of confidence, but I'm a dragon. Just throw the ball to me. So, <laughs> call me collective. I just, you know, kick the ball to him. I walk back. He says, check. And I went on the other side of the check. You know, when you check, you're on the bottom. So, I got on the top. I said, you're a kid. What you mean? You check. Get the ball. Like, I, you don't get the ball first. Yeah, he was, he was on him. So, I tripped around and gave him the ball, and my shoes was untied, and he shot the first one, and made we going to five. He made the made five. It. Boom. Made it. I said, hold on. Off the cross I, saw, I saw off the over. Matter of fact, he dunked it. Remember he dunked it, and the ball went all in, and I went like this. I said, hold on. And I tied my shoe, and I heard P say, yeah. I heard him and T.A. say, yeah, yeah tie them man, shoes, tie killer. Them shoes. <laughs> and that's when the dragon came out. And I, and I just, I, I mopped him 5-1, but one. I had to go <laughs> dragon. He had so much swag that I was like, Man, do I spit fire on him? When I saw how hard he dunked it, oh no, this kid's shit. Let me tie him up. I tied up and I went five straight. But I, I tapped him. Keep working on your game. He was hot. Yeah. Threw the ball. Yeah. Man, want yeah. to scrap? He was hot. And, and Dad threw him out. Get out. Go get him. Go work on your game. That's why you got mopped up. <laughs> and then, let's start practicing. Listen. That's when I knew, man. This man is not losing no. to nobody. <laughs> that's when I care. knew. That's when I knew right there. Austin Rivers gonna be in our league about two years. Yeah, he said that. You said that. I said he gonna be in our league about two he years. Said that. He said that. Man, he a pro. He hated bro. losing. He wanted to fight. I said, boy, you don't get out of here, boy. I, boy, I, I was a dragon. 
Boy, we just hoop. Why, why you don't? I was, we was both going, but the way he was reacting, he was acting like he was a pro already. That's incredible. Then I almost slapped the damn horn game. Like, you calm down, boy, you boy. You remember that? Doing the game. Ball picked up by Garnett. And Chris Paul has to use a timeout. What was Austin Rivers thinking about? During the one game, he said something. I said, and, I, and I caught him. I said, boy, you almost he, got When he shit. made it to the league. He got to the league. We got two. He said something real slick. And I almost raised up to slap him. And I, ca I caught myself like, man, I ain't finna get kicked out again. Boy, I can. Boy, let me quit. The next story talks about a moment where Steven Adams was facing up against Kevin Garnett for the first time, whilst Kevin Garnett was entering the end of his career, but still, he was an amazing trash talker and wanted to get into Steven Adams' head. The story is just so funny because of what Steven Adams says next. He's got this uh, presence about him, mate. That's, it's, 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 it's intimidating. I played the English card, English card uh, card one time. He said something and I was just like, oh, it's just like, no English. <laughs> no, no English, mate, sorry. <laughs> and so, kind of left me alone, which is brilliant. Um, yeah, but the way he just talks to everyone, and uh, it's not so much as a uh, trash talk, obviously he's like phenomenal at it. Um, but it's more so like how he runs the team and how everyone in the team kind of uh, picks up off his energy and uh, it just does what he says. That was probably the only story that doesn't involve an actual story about anything KG said, but I just had to put it in this video because it was just so funny that he believed that Steven Adams couldn't speak English and never spoke to him on the court ever. Most of us know about the feud between Joe Kim Noah and Kevin Garnett, but if you don't, here's the story. It takes place when Joe Kim Noah was a rookie entering the league. He was a huge fan of Kevin Garnett growing up. He had posters, memorabilia, and absolutely loved Kevin Garnett. He idolized KG. But when Joe Kim entered the league and played against KG for the first time, KG wasn't having any of it, and ripped into Joe Kim Noah. Ever since then, the beef has been on, and this is what happened. All right, Thank here we you. go. Ready? Because you have famous beef with Joe Kim Noah. I don't Noah have any beef with anybody. He's beefless. He, have anybody. Can you tell us your first interaction with Joe Kim Noah? Listen, I don't have uh, any right. We don't I'll, have interaction. I don't have an interaction. I'll handle this, Kevin. Yeah. He no. does not need to. Let's go. That's the end of the interview. You know, we're here competing. I'm not well, going to give you anything. The end of the story was Joe Kim Noah. It's like I, you were my idol growing up, and Kevin just turned to him and said, fuck you, Noah. <laughs> no, he asked me, real shit. He asked me, he asked me the move I just gave him. No, uh -huh. Nigga, figure it out. Well, <laughs> get out of here. Me. Oh, fuck I look like. Oh, fuck I look like, man. Get that out of you. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's ready to run and you got a bulls right now. He's mad. <laughs> cool. uh, all right, so tell us your side of that story. Right, I'm going to tell you straight up. KG was, um, first of all, I just don't understand how... I don't think he remembers because I think the story meant a lot more to me than it did to him. Right. What's what sucks is that when I was growing up, I used to have his poster in my room. I used to wear his jersey. <laughs> and the truth is, you know, my rookie year, you know, I was, you know, in admiration of this guy. And, and you know, he kind of shut me down. And, and you know he was very mean to me my rookie year. <laughs> he was like true, Kevin. I uh, I had posters <laughs> of you in, when I was growing Listen, up. Listen, it's a time and place for everything. You don't ask someone during the game or during competition to, no, no, that, not not me. You don't ask me anything during competition. I'm not. I can't. You can't focus. Right. Yeah. You know, we're here competing. I'm not well, going to give you anything. The end of the story was Joe Kim Noah. It's like I, you were my idol growing up, and Kevin just turned to him and said, "Fuck you, Noah." I had KG posters in my wall. I had a fucking KG. Uh, Jersey growing up so the tr this is the story this is what happened the first time I play KG I'm hype as hell like we're playing the Celtics I'm on the Bulls and I think they're up like 30 points and I'm in the game like it's it's like th the last seconds like nobody gives a shit so we're at the free throw line and uh, he used to work out with this guy called Joe Abunasar and I was working out with him for, for pre-draft so I was always excited. I was always hoping like KG would walk in the gym and you know, I, was, I would be able to like work out with him. And I remember asking him a question about, yo, you like, you gonna, you gonna work out with, with Joe? This, I, I was just trying to be cool. Like I was just wanted to be, I just wanted to say something to my idol. And he just like looked over and he was like, yo, like who, who the fuck are you talking to? Like, 
who the fuck you think you're talking to? And then like when he said that, I was like, oh shit, like <laughs> I shouldn't have. And then like I kind of fell back, knowing that I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have said that. Like not, not during the game, right? You know. And then I didn't say anything. And then when I didn't say anything, I guess he thought I was a fucking. I guess he thought I was pussy or something because he was like, he kept like getting like louder and sh louder. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, and then from that from that moment on, I swear to God, I was like, yo, I'm going at him. Every single time we play, we are going at it. And he's only mean to the young guys and the Euros for some reason. <laughs> you know, I don't know why, but he's that's who he doesn't like. And so. Charlie Villanueva <laughs> too. I mean, what was that all about? Did you guys catch the Villanueva story? Uh, I, mean, that, I mean, it's just not nice stuff to say, you know? It leads you on into what Kevin Garnett said next. Did KG take it too far calling Charlie Villanueva a cancer patient? Comment down below what you think, but this is the story. Well, Kevin Garnett has never been shy on the court, but according to Charlie Villanueva, he crossed the line last night following the Celtics' 23-point win over the Pistons. Villanueva posted on his Twitter account that Garnett called him a cancer patient during the game. You know, him and I had a little situation. I felt like it was a little more personal. He talks a lot. You know, but I guess it's 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 his part. It's part of his game. Villanueva suffers from alopecia areata, which is an autoimmune skin disease resulting into hair loss. Here are the tweets posted by Villanueva early on Wednesday morning. Quote: KG talks a lot of blank. He's probably never been in a fight. I would love to get in a ring with him. I will expose him. KG called me a cancer patient. I'm pissed because you know how many people died from cancer, and he's tossing it like it's a joke. I wouldn't even trip about that, but a cancer patient. I know way too many people who passed away from it, and I have a special place for those. He definitely can't do that now. They, they, I think they're, they're on top of things now. Garnett got into mellow skin to the point where he just couldn't control himself during that game with the, the, the rumor about the, the, uh, Rice Krispies, you know, Honey Nut Cheerios. Honey yeah. Nut Cheerios, like I'm yeah, not Yeah, I mean, see, that's, that's it. You just don't do that. Like, I don't know what went, if it's true or not. I don't know the details. But if it is true, like you just don't go there. That's like you taking it to a whole nother level. If we're talking about Kevin Garnett taking things too far, this next story of Kevin Garnett going in on Carmelo Anthony's wife is one that many around the NBA thought to have been way too far by Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett probably did say what he did because Melo wouldn't have reacted the way he did. Hello everyone, if the Knicks and Celtics were not a rivalry before last night, it sure is one now. The Celtics getting the better of the Knicks 102 to 96, but everyone's talking about what went down after the game. We know KG and Carmelo got into it a little bit during the game, both guys getting the technical. Well, Carmelo let it spill over to after the game. You see him in the red hat right there waiting alongside the Celtics team bus for Kevin Garnett. A lot of people want to hear from you about this whole Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> the Honey Nut Cheerios. But a lot happened in between. Jordan Crawford of the Boston Celtics apparently told Carmelo Anthony KG F'd his wife. Possibly um, one of the bench players. Alright, it started right here. Yeah, it was Crawford and Felton. But then that year they played off in an all-star game, so they obviously hashed it out and worked out everything in the end. One time during the year, you and Kevin Garnett got into it a little bit as his teammate right now. Have you been sharing lockers, sharing stories, getting along with Yeah, you want, you want a ticket? There you go, right there. I just want to make sure everything's cool with you guys. Come on, man. Right there. Come on, man. Come on, man. You, 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 would, you would come in here with that <laughs> outfit on and ask that type question. <laughs> and this last story talks about KG and Big Baby Davis. There are two stories involved in this one story that we all know about Glenn Davis crying on the bench. KG ripped into Big Baby on the bench, but what was their relationship like in the first place? Glenn Davis tells the story. So what's the real story on okay, that so story? Look, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm clear this up for the world right here. I want you to tell the story with you and KG. The big ticket story. I'm a rookie and it's kind of like the first day everybody's coming back and they're getting acclimated and you know they playing pickup everybody's working out and stuff like that so we have a pickup game mm -hmm. and you know he's the four and I'm the four so I get the ball at the wing and I shoot it like I shoot it and I, I tell myself I tell myself I'm talking to myself though get up get it up <laughs> He he turned look like that little motherfucker. You talking shit? <laughs> First, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm really aware with crazy stuff like that. Like right. so, 
I'm like, I ain't talking shit to you. I'm talking to myself, big fella. Like, I ain't at you. He was like, I'm, and then I was like, I'm just trying to get my little swag, bro. Yeah. He say, fuck your swag. <laughs> Then you know the other side of me was like, <laughs> okay, well fuck your swag, yeah. And I'm literally like, yo, fuck your swag, <laughs> yeah. I'm right running back. He's like, all right, shit, shit, all right. You know how he born, born like a fool. <laughs> yeah, okay, this bitch is like you know what I'm saying. That's right. Like, all right, you know. <laughs> that's how you say you know it. Like, so you know, so going. you know me. I'm like, all right, like. That's what I gotta do to the get on. you come out. <laughs> right. Me being a rookie, the next day I'm thinking like I'm in there early. Ticket walk right by me. I'm like, what's up, ticket? He just walk. <laughs> <laughs> like he ain't even see me. Like he ain't want to talk to me. You know what I mean? No yeah. acknowledgement. You Bruh, saying what's up? That crushed me. Yeah. I gotta make this right. Yeah. <laughs> like so, you know, I walked up to him. And I was like, bro, did I do something wrong to you? You know, yesterday I thought that stayed on the court. If I did, I apologize. And he looked at me and he was like, you know what, young and I fuck with you. And after that, we was locked in. Garnett doesn't mince words. And sometimes it's tough. And now Davis down at the end with a towel on his head. Garnett didn't want to come back in the game, but he's had to because what was a 25 point lead is now 13. Funk was just frustrated. And he was in a moment to where we all felt he needed a second. So, you know, he went to the end of the bench and, you know, yeah. he cried and had a moment with himself. But I'm going to roll with a guy who's going to show me his heart and wear his heart on his sleeve and go and play with passion over anything. I was a rookie and you don't get to play. So when you mess up and, you know, you you about to come out the game. Right. And, so. and we, we're up and I'm upset because I my bills need to be paid. I need to, you know, Doc can't be taking me out of the game. It's 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 chump minutes right now. So, you know, I'm I'm really passionate about, you know, and that's why I played with them because I took every possession serious. And these were seven trash talking moments by Kevin Garnett. Let me know what you thought was the craziest trash talking story by KG down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like to show your support. Subscribe for NBA content every single week and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.